now. And yes, uh, we are. Yes, the, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, we're gonna be saying, we'll be posting this later for people to review because not everybody can be here. Yep. And I think I was gonna actually let me see if I can live stream this to Facebook just for fun and see here. Uh, do, do, do. All right, I'm going to put this directly in the Home Inspector Pro group. So anyone who's hanging out there. Well, apparently as the administrator, I don't have permission to create a, a live stream on that group. So I will just upload it afterwards. That's kind of funny. <laughs> Seems to be a little bug there between Zoom and, uh, and Facebook, but that's fine. Um, so yes, we definitely will record that. Uh, we'll get started here in just a minute or two. If you guys have questions, definitely feel free to, uh, to throw it in. Um, I'm gonna throw up a poll real quick. Um, just how many of you have already made the switch to Home Inspector Pro? You can uh, say, yes, you've already switched. Uh, yes, you've purchased it, um, but haven't started using it yet, or no, you uh, haven't purchased it yet. You're still, uh, you're still waiting to make that decision. So let's see here. Awesome. I like this poll feature. Look at that. 80, 80 awesome. people already answered. So I want to, uh, to first uh, just thank our, our kind of panelists that we have on here to help with this discussion today. Uh, we have Chris Gilson, who is an AHIT instructor out of uh, Colorado, and uh, Chris and I have got to know each other. He came, uh, came, came and visited and had dinner at my house uh, a couple months ago when he was teaching a, a class out here in Riverside. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dominic Marisich. I'm the CEO of Home Inspector Pro, uh, which I started back in 2004. So it's been uh, 18 years as of uh, next week in four days, and it'll be our 18th anniversary. So I'll cover a brief history there in a second. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I got Dan McConnell, um, who's one of our project managers uh, at Home Inspector Pro. Uh, Jerry Bear, who is a Texas inspector um, who switched to HIP a couple months ago from Inspect It. Uh, in, who's in Texas, and I got Shannon Gateway, Gatewood, who's also in Texas, and switched quite a few years ago, um, but I thought would be a good example to kind of have someone who's been using HIT for years uh, that was originally from the AHIT uh, school and the Inspect It group. Um, Matt Barlow is, uh, is hiding there from AHIT just in case he's needed, uh, and Kayla, who's our, our director of marketing also, so if they decide to pop in, they're, they're definitely more than welcome to. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, you know, the, the goal today is really to kind of talk about the software, go over some things in depth. Uh, we are going to record this. We'll post this. We've had a lot of questions. Uh, we've had around 800 inspectors uh, just in the last 60 days that have switched over to Home Inspector Pro, and the majority of those are um, our A-hit guys that have been switching over. And so there's been a ton of questions, and we've uh, developed a very good FAQ um, with our own internal staff, you know, just things that are often answered. And so we're going to cover some of those questions and then, you know, hear from some of the people that have already switched over as well. Um, just for those of you that don't know, you know, Home Inspector Pro, like I said, it was created back in 2004. Um, I created the company after getting my first home inspection, the group of inspectors or the inspector that came out at the time, uh, was frustrated with the software that he was using at the time. And he was working for a larger organization. They asked me to build a program and I built one for them. Um, and it kind of grew from there. The second group of people was this all female franchise in New Zealand and they were very focused on aesthetics. And because of that, the software really took the standpoint from the very beginning that the inspection report is a marketing piece. It's not just the final product that you give across to your client at the end of the job, but it's something that you hope gets shared um, it's something that, you know, will hopefully gain you more jobs. And, and that was a really important piece of the puzzle as we were starting out because a lot of inspectors at the time were still using checklist reports or they were using other inspection software that was basically just black and white, you know, maybe had some, a couple pictures on it that were all at the end. And the inspectors that I was um, building the software for at the time we're all inspecting on site. They were all finishing on site. They were all using these old Windows tablets, the HP TC 1100s, and they were finishing and printing in triplicate on an inkjet printer. 
And so for the first two years I was developing the software, I didn't know that inspectors went home. You know, the, the, whole, um, the whole way that I was learning that inspectors worked was they were done when the job was done. And so we originally developed the Windows version of the software to be used on a, on a tablet using a stylus, handwriting recognition. Uh, and then we shortly after that added a Mac version. We even had a Linux version for a while. And that went really good. Uh, we were probably about 50-50 with the percentage of guys that finished on site using handhelds and tablets, but a lot of guys had a hard time with styluses uh, and getting handwriting recognition and getting used to it. And so they would go home and polish it. Uh, and then when mobile devices came out, uh, people found that, you know, first they already had a mobile device. So it was very easy to, you know, pick up a device you already had and test things versus going and buying, you know, a tablet for a couple thousand dollars. And then at the same time, they got used to, you know, thumb typing and they got used to speech to text recognition and all these things made it easier and easier and easier to use a mobile device and to finish in the field. And so now the majority of inspectors that, have, that are using HIP, they collect all the data um, directly on mobile. They generate the report and review or generate it back on site or they'll take it home and review it and generate it and send it out. So there's, there's quite a few different ways that that, that can be done. Um, but now we have inspectors using our software in 24 different countries. Um, we have guys using what the primary original focus was, which is, you know, residential and commercial inspections. And that expanded. We have guys doing mold and radon and septic tanks and sewer scopes and well testing. And then we have this whole other group of people that knew home inspectors or used our software and switched uh, to another industry and that now use our software for crane inspections and elevator inspections and seawalls and skyscraper HVAC systems. And we even have inspectors that have created car inspection templates because they're multi-inspector firms and they want all their employees to inspect their car, you know, the first of every month. <clears throat> and so it's, the key is, is that HIP is an engine and it has a, a awesome template editor for you to really make all those modifications and, and making those heavy modifications are way easier on a large, you know, 20 or 30 inch screen than it is on a five inch screen. And so that was one of the big advantages from the very beginning of having a desktop and a mobile component, especially when you start getting into doing like commercial reports and stuff where the jobs really vary. Uh, we had a, the Brick Kicker franchise um, uses our software uh, exclusively across the franchise and they were doing an ice cream factory that was like 150 years old or 200 years old uh, a couple months ago. And, you know, this it was like a 100,000 or 150,000 square foot ice cream factory. You're, you're not going to have a normal template that's built in for that. That's something they modified beforehand, loaded up directly into their uh, mobile device, and then went off and inspected. Um, so we're going to just some of the, the, the big questions, and I know the things that, um, you know, have come up a lot. The, the first big thing is that, you know, we have this awesome discount that a hit is negotiated for for all their students, uh, past graduates, past people that bought inspect it. And that uh, originally went to the end of December because there was so many people that were interested in it. Um, we extended that to the end of this month. And so uh, if you're currently using inspect it, um, if you bought it last year because you were you know, a recent graduate, then you actually get the 799 software for free. If you bought it before that, um, then you get the software for half off. So instead of spending 800, you're spending 400. And um, that's a, a massive discount, you know, courtesy of, of a hit kind of negotiating uh, on your part. Uh, we have had a lot of people that still ask like what's going on with inspect it. So just in case, you know, you weren't reading all the emails that they sent out, um, inspect it is being retired on June 30th. Um, they made the decision that, you know, inspect it is an awesome, amazing school, but it's very hard to be awesome at a school and awesome at an inspection software. And so they uh, went over and surveyed all the software in the industry and decided that we were kind of the best fit uh, as a partner going on for their uh, new students that are going through the school that'll be trained directly with our software. Um, and then also, you know, going forward uh, with anyone that was currently using Inspect It and wanted to switch. So there's a, you know, a great partnership and relationship that we've been building for, you know, the last half of 2021 um, before we, we went public um, and kind of got everything going. And we've been working with some of the awesome uh, instructors like Chris over here that's been uh, helping us create uh, A-HIT templates. And there's already one A-HIT template that is built into the software now when you download it. 
And I know all the AHIT instructors have actually been getting together and kind of starting as they've gotten comfortable with what the software can do, starting to build better and better templates uh, that will be available, you know, directly for, for all the AHIT students. Um, before I kind of go into to different features and, and stuff like that, um, Chris is, is one of the uh, AHIT instructors and was one of the first to switch over his multi-inspector firm uh, from inspected to HIP. So I kind of wanted Chris to give you a few minutes just to kind of talk about your experience and how things are going now and when you switched. Awesome. And I apologize if I lag a little bit. I'm on a um, back of a mountain at about 8,500 feet. So sometimes it goes a little slow. Um, yeah, I, I have a, a multi-inspector firm here in Colorado. We have uh, six inspectors and uh, running uh, full speed. And when uh, we heard that an inspector was going to go away, we knew that it'd have some time, but I'm not real good at waiting. <laughs> and so um, the, the the search began at that point in time. And I think I looked at about 23 different softwares out there, got down to a, a short list of about five pretty quick. And um, uh, after that, to about two. And uh, you know, I developed a relationship with Dominic. Um, was pretty surprised that uh, nobody else out there reached out um, really at all. And that spoke uh, volumes to me uh, as far as their customer service and uh, reacting to uh, what the market's doing. Um, I had to look for things uh, for, my, for my own company uh, to start with, and that would be a, a flexible program that I could uh, create a template that was what my clients and my customers were used to seeing. And um, uh, that was one of the big things for me when I got into um, kind of tearing apart Home Inspector Pro and, and, and diving in and um, building up a template for my company. Immediately, I found that uh, not only could I build up a template, but it would be something that was um, uh, really attractive to my uh, customers, my clients, my realtors, as far as an upgrade, as opposed to a oh my gosh, you know, a whole different version of uh, what was out there. And um, being an A-HIT instructor, I also teach about 160 days a year for A-HIT and uh, a, lot of, a lot of teaching um, up in Washington and various parts of the country. Uh, the next uh, concern I had was uh, ease of learning for my students. And, you know, you get out in the field and they need to have a, a solution. They're looking, uh, looking for that solution that follows what the instruction is. And so, um, we really, uh, uh, you know, killed two birds with one stone and uh, uh, made my clients, my realtors really happy. And then also uh, I have something and, and the other instructors have something to uh, uh, put out there in the classroom. And I'm really excited that the other instructors are involved at this point in time now because they're just um, taking the product and, and improving it. And as they learn some of the uh, flexibility and some of the things it can do, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. I've tested it out on a number of the uh, other instructors. I mean, when I was building it and all I got was, wow, this looks exactly like what we're used to. And, um, you know, once you get used to not checking boxes, you're really just checking sentences and it's the same thing. And, um, you know, I gotta say some of the features that uh, were add-ons to me was uh, one of the things that Inspect it, uh, never did and I always wanted it to. I wanted to take a picture and then record the comment right underneath it. And, um, uh, that wasn't possible, and now it is. Uh, the capture function is great, and um, I, I simply tell my students anymore in the classrooms, um, as you get going in your um, inspection career, and as you get um, familiar with this product, um, you'll find out that you'll be able to speak your, your language and your voice and your style through it, because you can adjust it to be what you want it to be. Uh, really literally, I mean, I'll, I've sent uh, Dominic a handful of questions in almost every single one, was just like, uh, oh yeah, I can do that. Oh yeah, I can do that. And um, you know, it's been that way all the way through it. And I still find some new things um, after I've been pretty involved in it. And I don't know, three months, four months, I don't know. Time goes so fast, but um, uh, there's still neat little toys out there to find and just love it, love it to death. Oh, thank you very much. Um, and you have what, five inspectors working for you? Yeah, I've got five and myself. Okay. Um, so they make, they make me go out every now and then <laughs> I was going to say you're, you're gone every time I talk to you. Um, we, we have obviously, you know, thousands of single inspectors that are, you know, well, they might be married, uh, thousands of individual inspectors that are, that are using the software, um, as well as big franchises like buyer's choice, um, which their franchise uses our software in, in like eight or nine countries. 
Um, it's really cool. If any of you guys ever want to go and have a tax deductible excuse to go to like New Zealand or Australia or even India, um, just let me know. I'll hook you up with inspectors and in other countries and, you know, you can go make a trip. Just make sure you stop by and go uh, visit a home inspector and maybe go on a ride along for a day. And then, you know, you, you have to pay for those expenses somehow. So it becomes a business expense. Um, uh, we, you know, literally it's been kind of crazy seeing reports come in from like countries all over South Africa. Um, the, the British had mandatory inspections for years. And so when the British would go buy vacation homes on like the, the coastline of Namibia, they would ask for a home inspection. And of course, you know, supply and demand and there was no supply. So home inspectors started popping up there and, and using our software. And so uh, there's been all sorts of really cool um, things that, that have come up there uh, along the way, looking at stuff from other countries. Um, one of the, the biggest things that, um, you know, we hear and, you know, is extremely important. And one of the things that has always helped separate us apart uh, from any other software in the industry is really been our tech support. Um, when I started this company, I was actually teaching programming um, at a high school and, and running IT. And I was working on open source software at the time, which is like community-based software. And I, I knew that, you know, when I started getting into talking with home inspectors, especially the original group that I met, and that really hasn't changed over the last 18 years, is that home inspectors aren't always the most technical guys. You know, you're coming from construction backgrounds or, um, you know, different trades, you know, not all the time, but often. And so you don't have this, the best, you know, technical computer-wise uh, background. And so tech support was always something extremely important to us. And something we heard early on was, you know, I use Program X and their tech support shuts down at you know, five Eastern and two Pacific, and then I have to wait till Monday if I want a question. And so that never made made sense because, you know, you guys are working till, you know, 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night. And so, you know, you need someone else that's there for you. And so um, our tech support runs seven days a week. We have um, employees that come in and they're answering the phones at, uh, at five Pacific, eight Eastern time, and are going all the way till midnight Eastern uh, or nine Pacific. And that's what we promise. And then the reality is, you know, myself and Dan and others are checking live chats and tickets if there's an urgent issue even later than that. We're actually working right now on hiring uh, a dish, couple additional people um, that could be even working overnight just because because we're international and we have so many people, you know, contacting us from places like New Zealand and Australia um, that are, you know, up when we're, you know, fast asleep over here across the pond. Um, we need someone that's that's there to help them out. And so we're trying to get this goal of literally having support around the clock. One of the um, other awesome things is, you know, our Facebook group has over 3,500 inspectors that are on there. And it's pretty amazing looking at the stats of like how many are live each week. And literally over 2,000 of them are active every single week. And so we, there's inspectors that ask questions on there all the time. And oftentimes guys like Shannon are on there uh, here answering the questions even before I do. So um, you know, we have this awesome support group, you know, just within the inspector to inspector community that's really been uh, fantastic at, at kind of helping things along. Um, Shannon, how long have you been using Home Inspector Pro now? Uh, since August of 2017. Okay, so uh, five years. Okay, awesome. Been on five years, yeah. Now, you're a single inspector? Um, yes, but I've had a a guy working with me for the last few months, um, which really kicked me in the butt to update a lot of my comments and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so there's nothing that will cause you to clean up your library other than starting to train somebody else. Um, are you using the team inspection feature at all? I, I We have. Um, a lot of times I forget to create the inspection using the team in, in inspection. So sure. Uh, it ends up, we end up just merging reports. Um, and yeah, so we've had a couple of bugs that you guys were working on that were annoying me at one point. Now, I know they're fixed now, but uh, we've been on separate inspections for the last couple of weeks. So. Yeah, the team inspection feature is finally coming out of officially being called beta. We've we've left it. It's in the app right now. But if, if you guys haven't looked at it, you go to the settings tab and there's a beta features option. And if you enable the beta features, it'll turn on this live team sync and and um, like Shannon said, we, we've had this merge feature where you could merge multiple inspectors work together at the end of the job. We've had that for years. Um, and in fact, that ice cream factory and other large jobs, we see inspections that'll have five inspectors uh, on them. Um, 
saw an inspector uh, a couple of months ago, they did a 300 unit apartment complex. And not only did he have another inspector with him, but he brought out an electrician and an HVAC guy. And he literally just handed them a phone and said, here, here's quickly how you use the app and, and start collecting data for me. And they merged the data together at the end. Um, what we've been working on for a while and what Shannon was saying he's tested out is our live team sync. And that feature is really cool. We have a lot of people that, that team inspect. Think, Jerry, are you team inspecting there too? No, single spec. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm independent. We, you're independent. Okay. I know we have a lot of either husband wife teams or just multi inspector firms that go out and they, um, they, every inspection has two or three inspectors on them. And using the live team sync, you can actually see each other's work in real time. So rather than waiting and going back uh, and merging it at the end of the inspection, you actually can have one guy in the attic and one guy in the roof. And the guy in the attic looks up to see a bunch of water damage, flips to the roofing section, and sees the picture of the missing flashing that the guy on the roof took. Um, and that's a, a really cool feature because it kind of gives you that, that instant feedback to use while you're going through the software. Um, you know, um, Dominic, on that one, um, my yeah. team started to play, we've started to play with that because that is going to be a nice marketing push this year. It has been huge. The, there's a lot of companies, especially on the East Coast, um, that do a ton of this. And um, one of the things that we see is it, it's all about the marketing aspect of it. Um, you know, you have, say you have two man teams or three man teams, you could be in and out of a house in an hour, uh, hour and a half. And what you're saying is it's still the same number of man hours. You still have, you know, three hours worth of people that are there, but the agent and the client only need to be sitting around for an hour. And agents, of course, love that because they don't want to sit around an inspection for three hours. Um, the inspectors love it because if someone's, you know, bugging them or they bring a, a family of, you know, five people to the inspection site, one inspector is kind of, you know, talking with the client and the other two are off uh, getting their work done and then, and then switching over. So I'd say it's definitely something that we've seen across the industry that's been growing a lot um, over the last uh, last five or six years. And there's some companies now, like I said, that that's all they do is have multi-man teams. And just, just a quick note, I ran it with my last class. I had 14 students and I had them all do the same team inspection. And it was a, a bizarre thing, but it was cool. They all They all kicked into it, so... We did the same thing in a class in Orlando last month with a, a class full of uh, home inspectors at a conference. And yeah, everyone started taking selfies in every section and commenting on each other's stuff. But it was it was a good test of the system to see, you know, we had like 20 people in the team inspection at the same time. Um, so going over, you know, some of the other features um, and some of the other big questions that we get, you know, one of the questions that we get a lot from the inspected users is with inspected, you know, they were used to generating the report directly on the mobile device. Um, and with HIP, you need a laptop or a desktop at the end to do the final report generation. Um, and that's, that's been a big question that we've had is, is why. Um, and we've, you know, once the inspectors have switched over and they've seen why, we've had all these people come back and say, oh, this is awesome. You know, I absolutely love this. But there's that initial, you know, shock that it's something that's different. Um, so I just want to kind of explain why it is that, that we do that. Um, mobile devices are, are somewhat limited. They're, they're really content uh, consumption devices. They're not content creation devices. And so there's certain things that they're not super efficient with. Uh, we also have tons of inspectors. In fact, Chris is a perfect example um, that are not in the best data service area. And so, you know, there's tons of Colorado, for example, that have, you know, no internet, you know, during the inspection at all. And so the first thing is like, you know, HIP doesn't need inspect, doesn't need internet, you know, at all when you're using it, the mobile version. Um, but the, the main thing is all the advanced features that we've really created to help the software and to help you and your report stand out from all your competition. And so some of it is, is time-saving time features, uh, and some of it is features that are just additive to the software. So for example, um, you have the ability within Home Inspector Pro to link graphics to a narrative. So you have a, um, a comment about ice dams. And then you have a photo of what an ice dam looks like. And whenever that narrative is selected, the graphic automatically gets inserted in the report. Or you have a, a comment with a, an illustration about what GFCI outlets look like or, um, you know, TPR valves and where they should be and, and, um, and all that kind of stuff. And so one of the things that's really cool in HIP is you can link all these narratives to your graphics and so that way you don't have to think about it. You literally select the comment. And especially if you're a multi-inspector firm, you don't have to worry about your, your employees, your team thinking about it. You select the narrative, the graphic that corresponds goes to it. Well, our graphic library alone has a thousand images in it. Uh, and it has, and right now it's actually about a gig and a half in size. And we're coming out with a new version of it that I've been finishing up 
that, that we increase the quality because we increase the quality of the photos in our report again. Uh, for a couple of new features. And so that library is now over three gigs. And so it doesn't make sense to have a three gig library sitting on your phone that then has to connect to all these narratives. And so what happens is on the mobile device, it stores a reference to the file. And when you transfer the report back to the desktop, it inserts, or the laptop, it inserts all those graphics directly into the report that relate to that particular inspection. Um, the other thing is looking at video. So, you know, hit mobile, you can record video and I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. Um, so if you're on site and you see a picture or you see a, an issue with like flame rollout or you have an, something audible um, like, uh, you know, the noise from a garbage disposal, um, you know, Shannon, Jerry, do you guys have good examples that you've been using the video for right, uh, recently? Um, yeah, I just did a video today and I don't remember what it was about. What it was about. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had a couple of them. One of them is um, when you're using the video, it's really nice. You can catch a drip. Right. So if you got a slow leak, maybe you got a drip, you can catch that, you know, and you can see it dripping. The other thing is I was in a house about a month ago and one of the toilets uh, was doing some serious water hammer. I mean, it sounded like a, it, it was crazy. And I recorded the video of it and of course you could hear the audio and it was, um, it was, it, yeah, I got a lot of comments about how, how it was, how cool that was. So that was a great thing. So, yep, I've used it a few times and really, really nice feature. I remember Excellent. what mine was. Mine was uh, the bathtub had super low flow, but I couldn't get a good picture of it. Every time I took a picture, you couldn't <laughs> tell that it was just a, a little stream coming out. So I'm just, you know, sure. To, to video. One, one of, one of the things right that, uh, that we learned too, um, we hear back from inspectors all the time is um, make sure the audio it does get the audio so i you know there's some classic videos we've had shared of like inspectors going through crawl spaces and they stop to take a video and you hear them going <laughs> because they're like you know trying to squeeze through a crawl space and they're angling around so stop take a breath you know calm down get your heart rate down and then shoot the video um but those so the videos in the mobile software could be 30 seconds and and that's great and there's a lot of other software out there that's on the market that can include those short videos. Most of them limit to 15 seconds. You know, on mobile, we have a 30. But the cool thing is on the desktop side, there's no limit. So we have guys that are including uh, sewer scope videos, um, drone camera videos. You know, uh, some of the guys have the, uh, the crawl bots for the crawl space. And while we don't recommend, you know, putting an entire 15 minute video on the report, because uh, it will make the report large, we definitely have seen that. Um, what we, we re recommend is clips that are 30 seconds to a minute long, something like a sewer scope. You record yourself scoping all the way into the end, and then you record clips on the way back of the actual issues, and you put those clips inside the report. But it's very, it's very difficult to get and time consuming to get those videos from your sewer scope or from your, your drone directly over to your mobile device. And the other part of that is the, the video processing that we have on a laptop is a lot stronger. So we can do much better uh, reducing the file size of the video while maintaining the quality directly on a laptop because there's better libraries available for us to convert all that uh, than we can directly on a mobile device. It's extremely limited on a mobile device just even to change the resolution, let alone to change the quality. Um, the other thing is, is features like 360 images. So, you know, hit mobile, um, you know, can take photos and everything else. So back on the desktop or the laptop, if you have like a Ricoh camera or a GoPro Fusion, um, and you're taking those those 360 images, then you can include those directly into your report, and you drop those in, you know, directly at the end of the inspection once you trap or uh, uh, move that file back over through the cloud to your laptop. Uh, the other thing, and this is you know extremely difficult, uh, basically impossible on a mobile device, is doing all the PDF form fills. So we have the ability for you to take a PDF form, and this could be something like you're in Florida and you have wind mitigation forms, or you have four point, or you're doing insurance inspections in a lot of states. Um, and you can populate those forms directly from the, the software. In fact, Shannon, you'll be real happy to know Dan is finishing up the Texas uh, WDO form um, today. And he was okay. complaining about why the Texas form has 150 different fields and the Florida form has like 25. So, you know, just to show, show how different things are between some of the states. But the cool thing is you can collect that data within HIP Mobile and then merge that to any PDF. And we have, you know, a lot of people that are doing that for, like I said, insurance forms um, and, and all sorts of different things, but also people that just use it for marketing purposes. So, for example, uh, there's a company out there, they have a, a monster free certificate that they include in the back of the report when they have kids. 
and they have a PDF form on there. It's just a single field that has the client's name and then the date. And so when they generate the report, it pulls that information from the report and then attaches that PDF direct uh, to the back of the report. So there's all sorts of different things. We have people that have created like warranty cards. Um, they're using like recall check or different services. And so it'll, they'll have a PDF for the back and that way it includes the, the address of the house and the inspection date and the client's name and all that kind of stuff on the form. So that, that really adds like this whole different level uh, of options that people can do. There's, there's also some people that do like some very specific like living in place inspections and stuff like that where they don't follow like a traditional format. They have like an exact format that they have to follow. And so they'll create a PDF and they'll populate it uh, directly within the software. So there, there's all sorts of things. We have a, a stationary feature where you can, uh, and this actually came from, so the, the elite group out of California uh, is the largest inspection company in the country. Uh, they have uh, around 80 inspectors right now. And last month they did 4,000 inspections on our software. So one single company. Uh, and that's, <laughs> that's only in California, right? So that's pretty insane when you think about it that way too. And so they, years ago, when I started in this industry, they would actually pre-print paper that had their watermark on it. And they would run those through the inkjet printer uh, when they were printing out their inspection reports for their clients. And so we created this digital stationary feature where you can create a stationary that is kind of the background of the PDF that report prints on top of. And I know, Chris, you came up with a, a really good one um, that, that you were using there. Did you want to comment on that? Sure. Yeah, I'm a... I'm a photographer, so I do a whole bunch of stuff with photography, but uh, pulling it off of iStock photo and, um, you know, doing, I, uh, trying to find the right look, I just did screen prints of the iStock photo, laid them in there and saw what it looked like. And so I just tried a whole bunch of different styles till I found the one that I liked and then bought the one I liked. And uh, um, really super simple, super simple. You just make a small PDF out of the JPEG and, um, and life is good. Yeah, love the function. Yeah, definitely. I see a, a good Texas question here. And since we have two Texas inspectors, uh, I'll bring it up and give my answer and then I'll let you guys answer. Um, we've seen this a few times. So Chris Anton is asking the Trek 76 form in the software has items that are not on the Trek form uh, on the website. Why are these added fields uh, to the approved form? So the, the Trek form allows you to add anything that you want within each item on the section. Um, there's quite a few associations that want you to list off things like material types and stuff like that, that TREC specifically doesn't. But remember, the TREC standards of practice is the minimum. You're allowed to add additional things. So when we started creating the TREC form, you know, God, maybe 12, 13 years ago, it was the, uh, the 7 the seven one form, I think was our original, right, Dan? I think it was the, the original TREC form we had, maybe the 7-2. It was the 7-2 um, and then shortly the 7-3. Yeah, um, we, we would constantly have guys saying, you know, they wanted a way to separate out the materials and the observations on the report, because especially the guys that move outside of Texas, because they're used to having them as completely separate panels anywhere else. And so we added that ability to basically say, you know, here's the materials when you're talking about floors or walls or ceilings. Um, and then here's the observations about it. And they're directly under the item that's there. Now, if you didn't want that, you don't care about listing materials, you can definitely create a new damage panel and delete the one that's there. Um, it's really added there for, for simplicity's sake. Um, it is allowed. We have several members of the Trek Advisory Committee that actually use our software, um, which is one of the awesome things. They literally finish a Trek meeting and I get phone calls as these guys are driving home, usually at the same time. Uh, to tell me what's going on uh, with Trek. I'm curious, you know, Shannon and Jerry, have you guys left the stuff like materials in there uh, or you modified your template? You know, what's your guys' experience? Um, I've left most of it in there. Uh, I've modified here and there to suit my liking, but for the most part, I'll leave it in there. It's a selection panel most of the time, so I just click the button. And I'm yeah, there. it's a selection panel. Basically, you just single click it if you want the materials on there. Jerry, what about you? Yeah, I, I modified it somewhat to my use, and uh, but um, it, it's really handy just to be able to select those select those materials, and 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 that's that's really nice. It you know it's almost like having a checkbox in a hit, right? So it's it is it's very yeah, similar, you're, just, you're right? just selecting it. I had when, even on my Texas a hit, I had quite a few checkboxes that I had built in to inspect it. So um, I was I was used to that. It took me a little bit to get used to the narratives but once I did you know I figured out a lot of times some of my narratives 
are basically just yes, no check boxes. Yep. So it's a, I check it and it's yes. And I check it. It's no. And then, or, you know, generally if it's no, or if it's a problem, then I go into a, a larger narrative, but just like dryer voltage, I want to verify the dryer voltage. I just have it. I just check it and it, it just, um, I just push on it and it just gives me a yes. And I just, it's easy. So. Yeah. One easy. of the, one of the big features in hip, um, we added a long time ago, uh, but I still don't see guys always taking advantage of is the, is the notes feature. So you can have any word in double brackets and that is a shorthand for you uh, of something that'll appear on that the text won't appear on the report, but it's just to let you know. And so when you're looking at the mobile app, especially when you're a multi-inspector firm, but even for yourself, you start adding notes to all the narratives and then you don't have to read the whole narrative. You just read, you know, a toilet bowl loose and you select it and you don't have to read, you know, the entire narrative, which might be a couple sentences long. And then with that, as you get to know your narratives on the settings tab in mobile, you can actually set it. So hip only shows uh, a single line from each narrative. In fact, let me, uh, I'll pop on real quick. In, in a second here, I'll, I'll pull this up and then I'll, I'll actually uh, demo a little bit of this so guys can actually see what's directly in the software. I think I have a, a test account up here right now. Um, hey Dominic, while you're, while you're doing that, I, I, I'd just like to say that um, what I did when I went from a hit to hip, um, I decided to, I know a lot of people, I see a lot of people on Facebook, a lot of people asking about the templates, about uh, the narratives, downloading all those and um, take an A-HIT template and put it in a HIT. I decided at that time, because when I started, I, all I had was A-HIT. So I only had those narratives that I, I used in A-HIT and ones that I had written myself. And I knew at some point that I needed to change those and I needed to upgrade, but it's like, you, you know, you're busy, you're going about your day every day, every day, and you just don't upgrade or you just don't improve them as much as you could or should. And so one of the things I did is the personal choice was I spent, I spent probably three weeks <laughs> of uh, in, in the evenings, just spending time, just changing all of my narratives and going through the hip narratives and the a hit side by side, and then rewriting the narratives to suit what I needed to do for my business. And to me, it improved my uh, inspection process. It, it just, it was incredible how much it improved it because all of a sudden I was excited about the new software and I was in it and I was doing this and I was able to um, get back to um, going back and getting those narratives like I wanted them to be. So just, yeah, just that's something that we've, experience. that's definitely something we heard a lot is guys took, took advantage, especially uh, those that bought like in the beginning of December, right? Cause December, uh, you know, I know, I know the weather is really hard here sometimes in Southern California. I mean, it was like 65 degrees today. Um, it was cold. I almost put a jacket on. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's other guys, uh, I think it was Matt, you said it was what today? Negative six? Uh, negative eight with wind chill here in yeah. lovely Milwaukee. Yep. 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 So, you know, Milwaukee's negative eight. And so I understand a lot of inspectors, you know, they bought during December and they spent a lot of time deciding this was time for spring cleaning and they cleaned up their narratives and, and everything else. Um, and that's an awesome opportunity to really streamline yourself. So, so yes, we can convert your inspected template directly over to HIP template. So as soon as a hit contacted us, we were like, we're starting on a converter. And so we wrote a converter, uh, ran it through a bunch of guys initially and, and refined it with the first probably 20 or 30. Uh, we've done a couple hundred conversions now of inspected guys over into HIP templates. And then you can open up your template exactly inside Home Inspector Pro and you can modify it from there or you can start from scratch like jerry said and you can open up two copies of hips side by side and kind of copy and paste things that you like from one template over another um, but it, it's a really great opportunity to you know really work on you know streamlining and, and improving directly what you have um, let me i'm gonna try to screen share here let's see And while you're doing that, Dominic, um, just a quick, uh, a quick note uh, for anybody that's not tried the inspected template that we designed at the a with the AHIT team, uh, know that it's got all of the uh, uh, actually improved um, comments uh, that are being worked on even right now. So, you know, if you're used to the old uh, format and you didn't do a lot with the comments, um, know that they're being updated and the format's just right on uh, the report that comes out looks just like what uh, we used to have, except it's a lot neater. Yeah, the, um, 
AHIT uh, crew and the instructors have been awesome at really kind of helping improve, um, you know, their own templates that we're including in the software to give all you guys kind of a, a better head start. And we have, you still get all our default templates and everything else that's in there. Uh, on the Facebook group, for example, I saw one of the brand new inspectors that had switched over, um, created a, I think Dan, was it a sewer scope template or a septic tank template I saw shared today? On uh, it Facebook was just a... It was a septic template and I'm septic working on tank. posting that now. So, so, you know, you can go directly to the Facebook group group and you click on files at the top and you could download templates that other guys have shared. You can go to our message boards. We have literally over a decade worth of uh, templates that guys have shared that you can download and different posts and stuff that they've made on there. Um, are you guys able to, to see my screen right now? Yes. Okay. Uh, if you saw that, you can see my Costco order is about to arrive. So, um, you know, we're all good there. Uh, all right. So one, one of the, the takeaways from uh, from COVID was Instacart really saved a hell of a lot of time, uh, especially at Southern California Costco's. Um, so this looking directly at the mobile app, uh, I'm using an app here called Android Cast so I can uh, share the screen. Um, let me uh, I'll enlarge this a little bit. So one of the things right away, uh, you're looking at your entire list of sections. This is the, the default template that's included with the software. Uh, you can modify these templates as much as you want. You can be starting with your inspected template. Uh, it's really up to you, you know, what you want to do. But just kind of looking at the things that are here. So we're looking at the sections. If I click on a section like grounds, it's going to bring me directly to all the items within the ground section in this template. Again, everything can be changed. Driveway, grading, vegetation. So if I click on driveway, you know, here's all my narratives. Uh, if you're using ratings at the top, uh, you can just check that. Uh, we have the checkbox ratings that you can include in the report. Most people now, it's a little more millennial friendly, use our rating icon feature where you can have a graphic that represents, you know, safety issues or monitor or repair replace. But you select the the, the rating and then the graphic will, will appear. Um, things like in materials, I literally just click once. So concrete driveway noted, that's in the report. And then if I go down, I, if I click a comment once, it's going to appear in the report. So driveway is in good shape. If I click on it twice, it shows in red and it appears in the summary. So it's literally that simple to do the basics. It's in the report or it's in the summary. Now, if you want to get more advanced, HIP has the ability to do multiple summaries where you can break out summaries based on any categories you want. It could be that it's a safety issue or monitor issue, or it could be that you want all the electrical items categorized together. And no, I'm gonna, I don't yeah. understand. They, they can't see what you're doing. Ah, I wonder if I, I full screened it and you lost it. Okay, can you see it now? We just have yes. a menu. There it is. Got it. Okay. So, okay. So apparently I can't full screen it. Okay. So I, uh, just to show that again, if I click on something once it appears in the report, if I click on it twice, it's red, it appears in the report and the summary, uh, a good number of, uh, men in particular are red, green, colorblind. So everything within the software, uh, as far as the mobile app, the colors can all be changed and they have no effect on the final report. So if you, instead of wanting to see green, you want to see blue and instead of red, you want to see pink or purple, you can change that by clicking on settings uh, along the bottom of the app. If you um, it, if you want it in the report to appear a totally different color, you can easily do that. Now, what's nice is when I'm looking at a view, like I'm looking at the ground section right now, you can see very quickly that I have four grounds comments. You can see that the grounds, or sorry, uh, four driveway walkway comments that I've selected. It's grayed out to mean it was completed. And if I had taken photos there, then it would have the picture icon there as well. Uh, if I don't have anything to say about, uh, let's see, the, the uh, patio porch roof, I can long press on it and I can just say mark it completed. And even without opening it, it just marks it complete. And that's really, it doesn't affect the report, but visually it allows you to know that, that you've already done that. Once everything on this section of grounds is grayed out, then the ground section one layer above will show completely ground out. So I'm gonna long press on it right now and I'm gonna just mark it completed just like I was done. So I can force it complete. Oftentimes guys will use that stuff like, uh, there is no pool in this house, but I don't like seeing something that's not grayed out. So I'm gonna gray out the pool. So that shading, and again, you can change the color of the shading because it's all very uh, changeable it is, um, to keep, you keep track of, of your progress as you go along. The very top right here, I have a slider. So if you have really bad eyesight, you can blow up the font, you can shrink the font. If you have amazing Hawkeyes, you can you know see a hell of a lot more all at once. Uh, and that'll affect everywhere within the program. 
One of the other really cool things within the software is let's go back to uh, let's grab some electrical sections. I'm going to the service panel. It's the same thing. I can say acceptable or safety issue. Um, in this setup right now, I have locations. So I'm saying the main electrical panels on the north side of the house. Any of these can be modified. I can click the pencil, modify them just for this report. There's a sub uh, sub panel it's located in the basement. I select that. Then I can go through, I select, yep, there's sharp pointed metal screws. We know those are gonna be there. And I'm gonna put that on the summary. Um, but the other thing that I can do is at any point in here at the very top, I can start typing in a word. So I've typed in B-R-E-A. And here's all my narratives that have to do with breakers. And you know some of them you can see right now I have the software set up to show me three lines of each narrative. Um, so it says you know the breaker box, the second one talking about breakers, and then I can directly just select the comment that I want. So I don't even have to search through all my narratives. I just start typing, and the rest of it automatically appears. If you really want to get fancy, I can click this globe up here in the top right corner, and this is a template-wide search. So let's say I'm I'm looking at the service panel and I notice a giant crack uh, on the side of the house. I could just type in crack, and this is gonna bring up all the places in the report that I have crack comments. So you can see right here, here's my cracks I have for driveway and walkways. Um, I have uh, some more cracks in here. Let's see, uh, here's a grading comment. I have a patio and porch deck. So maybe I was on the, uh, on the patio where the electrical panel was, and there was a settlement crack at the base of the front step. So I wanna check that. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm back sitting here at the service panel. So without literally leaving where I was within the software, I can jump anywhere else. And this is actually a, a really, really important feature for guys that do system-based reports, especially in Texas, because in Texas, because everything is a pure system by system, you're not in a room by room flow. Like you know, most inspectors have like a room by room or a hybrid. Um, if you're in a system, this allows you to jump from one place to another very easily. And then the other feature that is, is really one of the the pinnacles that I know convinces a lot of people to switch over to HIP is, is the way that we handle photos. And we're always having this debate on the message boards, like how do we save a click, right? Uh, because you know if you save a click on one action and you do that actions 100 times or 150 times or for some inspectors, three or 400 times a report, like taking a photograph, uh, saving a click means three to 400 less clicks. So the way that we do photos is very different than any other software on the market. So in any other software, you click on the camera icon at the bottom, excuse me, and it'll open up a camera. And normally what happens is exactly what I'm, I'm looking at right now. Um, you click the shutter, oops, I guess, yep. So it's not gonna screen, I'll just, I'll just take a, a portrait photo. Um, so you take a picture and you see a preview screen. And on that preview screen, you can accept the photo and you accept it it goes back directly to the software. And if you wanna take a second picture, you have to open the camera up again. So one of the things that's absolutely unique within HIP is first on the screen where you preview the image, you can narrate it, or sorry, you can annotate it. So I can uh, do circles, uh, I can do arrows, I can do rectangles, I can change the color of anything that I'm doing as well. I can add text directly over where normally I would have had to exit the camera and then open up an edit screen to annotate the photos. And I'm still in the camera. So on the bottom, I have three pictures. The bottom left is to retake the photo because I took a crappy photo, happens often. The middle one is to accept the photo and then return back to the app. And the third one is to accept the photo and to take another. So I can actually sit here and I can rapid fire photos as quickly as I want. And this is extremely important and each time I'm here, I can actually annotate all these, you know, draw my arrows, everything else. And when I click on that accept button, I now have four photos that have uh, dropped in completely into the software. And so normally to take a photo and to annotate the photo takes five clicks, right? You, you open the camera app, you snap the shutter, you accept the photo, you click the edit button to edit the photo, which is what these pencils are to the right and then you annotate it and then you save it, it's five clicks. When you're rapid firing photos, after the first photo, it takes you two clicks for every single photo. You're taking the, hitting the shutter to take the photo and then you're hitting accept or accept and repeat, which means if you're taking 10 photos in a row, instead of doing 50 clicks, you're only doing 25 clicks. You got two for each photo plus five for the original. So you've cut the number of, of clicks that you're, you're taking down dramatically. And especially we have inspectors that I see all the time that are doing one, two, 300 photographs. 
This is a, a massive time saver. Um, and the other place that this comes in, in handy is places like the roof. You're on the roof, you wanna get on, you wanna get off as quickly as you can. Uh, and I see Jerry nodding his head there uh, because you don't, wanna, you don't wanna mess around with navigating around to the different sections. And so, you know, one of the cool things, Jerry, do you use uh, moving your photos here when you're on the roof? Yes, I, I use rapid on the roof as soon as I get up there. Um, you know, I, I know when I get off, then I'll add my captions. I'll go in and annotate or whatever I need to. But it just it, it just makes it so much quicker and safer. It's a lot safer when you just got to take the picture and you don't have to stop and fumble and try to figure out and put a narrative in or add a caption or anything like that to your photos. Get up there and get down, especially on something like 812 or something where you're just teetering you know it's like <laughs> let me live today yeah i heard i heard some houses have like ice and snow on them too right it's weird white stuff we, we see it we see it every once in a while here in california it never sticks uh, um, actually it's actually, actually not too weird dominic <laughs> we we actually have these these quite a quite a bit of snow in our local mountains I, I actually lived in the mountains for over a decade so i have seen tons of snow but down here and you know in the flatlands we don't see it often um so but one of the cool things here is you can take all the photos in this one section whatever the first tab is on your roof for example and then if you double tap the thumbnail it brings up a drop down to say hey where do you want this to go and so i can literally say this is actually a roof photo that I want to go on the flashing section and I save it and it move the photo or I double tap it again. And then this one is actually my chimney comment and then it moved that photo. So if you take all the photos just in the first tab on the roof, you get to the ground, then you can double tap them and move them where you want them. You don't have to worry about navigating around like Jerry was saying. The other thing you could do is if you long press it, um, then you can actually copy it. So let's say I have a photo I want to appear in two different places. I want to leave it in the electrical panel. Um, but I want to move it to, you know, exterior siding because there's also a picture of it just, you know, being totally, uh, you know, rotting away or whatever. So now I've left that original photo, but I've, I've moved another copy of that photo uh, to another section. And so that's a really cool feature that you can use, you know, when you're going through. And then, of course, I can just click on the pencil and I can draw arrows at my nice ceiling fan uh, or rotate the image. Well, it's going to tell me you can't rotate once you've drawn the shapes and stuff. So I can rotate it before that uh, and then save. The other thing that goes with that, though, is I can capture video. So, you know, anytime, any place, I click on start recording and I record video of all these things that the guys were talking about earlier. I click on stop recording. And now in that section, I have two photos now and a video directly within the report. Uh, and so that makes that, that entire process extremely easy. At the bottom, uh, you have uh, five different icons that you guys can see there. Um, one of them, let me move my, my zoom, uh, buttons here. Um, so you have the house. The nice thing is no matter where you are, that one click of the house takes you back to the main list of sections immediately. So you're always one click away from your main list of sections The navigation and the, the amount of taps it takes to get from one area to the other is extremely important. Um, if I take photos or videos from this main list of sections, they're CYA photos. They don't go anywhere in the report. They're just there, they save in the inspection file. You'll have them when you go back later. If you need a photo later, it's there, but it will not appear on the report. You just click the camera, the video icon at the bottom. And you can take a photo anywhere else and double tap it and slot it as miscellaneous uh, and it'll show up there automatically. The other thing is, is you have the ability to click uh, those two little uh, icons there at the bottom. And this will show you all the photos you have directly on your computer or on your phone. So if you have a, uh, so let's say you are using a drone and the drone is hooked up to the phone, then it'll actually show your drone photos and you can select those photos and they'll directly appear in there. One of the things that I teach often at a lot of conferences is uh, smartphone apps. And so using an app like Bubble Level is awesome or uh, Klinometer where you can put your phone down on a floor that you see is really sloped and you um, take a screenshot that shows the slope and the, uh, and the pitch and the yaw of the floor, and then you can insert that directly into the mobile uh, report right there. One of the other features in, in, you know, we've had a lot of guys, you know, they're they're trying to get used to, you know, how do I review with my clients on site? I'm used to generating the full report. So the reality is most inspectors still want to do some research on one or two things before they send out the final report, um, or they want to just at least, you know, spell check it or, or proofread it once before they send it. So the mass majority of inspectors I mean, it will spend 10 minutes just reviewing what they send. When you're on site, this icon on the bottom left 
this little paper icon and you click on that, that actually shows you by default, everything that you've put in the summary in all photos. So I can tap on one of the photos and I can start a slideshow with any of the caption comments I have and go through it um, with my client directly on site. And if I wanted to show everything in the top right, there's a show all button. And this is gonna show me every single comment in the report. So I can sit here, I could do a full review with the client directly there on site. Um, have any of you guys started playing around with the client presentation app yet? No, you know, I, I use it for my own uh, at the end of the inspection, it's like a summary. I can go through and make sure that all my photos have captions. Um, and um, it, it really, I use it for that. I have used it a couple of times with clients where I can just sit down and we can just scroll through there and I can, and it, it's really more of a reminder for me to make sure that I don't miss something if I'm going over it with the client. Sure. So that, so right. and that's doing the, the summary feature. So one of the, the features that's really unique with HIP is the client presentation app. And this is something again, that no other software has. So the client presentation app is actually a separate app that goes with HIP. And what we can do here, um, if you guys want to have a little bit of fun, we can, uh, on the settings tab here, I can click on enable beta features and give me a little warning. I'm going to go over and I'm going to type in a new file name and I click on start team inspection. And so if you guys do the same right now, you can actually click on join team inspection. Um, and there's a code there you can use while I'm talking here. You can actually join this team inspection. You can start taking pictures of your house and it'll just create this massive team inspection with the, you know, a couple hundred people that are on right now. Um, but the presentation app is similar to the team inspection where it's basically a slideshow like you just saw, but you take a separate iPad or an Android tablet and you set it down when you get to the job site and you tell the client, Hey, uh, you don't need to follow me around. Just chill, sit here with the agent on the dining table. I'm gonna throw some popcorn in the microwave to test that out. Here's a, uh, here's a, you know, uh, Shannon uh, Gatewood uh, inspection pad of paper and uh, take notes and you're going to watch a slideshow. And what the client sees is a, a rotation that never stops of every photo that you take and the captions. And so the client then relaxes, sits at the you know dining table or kitchen counter or on the floor if the place is empty. And they can, they can look at this slideshow as you're inspecting. And this was huge during COVID. We had inspectors that literally dominated their entire markets because when we created this app, it came out at the beginning, two months before COVID, came out in January. And the original intent was this, on the job site, the client watches the inspection. It was a solution to a bunch of inspectors that were complaining about clients following them on the roof, following up in the crawl, uh, following them up in the attic. You know, there's liability of them, you know, falling off on your ladder. But then also just the fact that the client is following you means that they're interrupting your flow, right? You're used to going through the house, you know, uh, clockwise um, and the client then pulls you off into a separate room to look at something and you forget the last thing you looked at. That's a liability problem. But if the client is watching this iPad that you dropped with the client presentation app and they're sitting down, they're leaving you alone. The inspectors were telling us this was saving them 50 to 30 minutes for every inspection because what was happening was first they weren't being bothered. Right. And I realize in some locales in the US and Canada, clients and agents are rarely there. Right. The reality is the majority of the country are there for at least half, if not the entire inspection. So that cut time because they weren't being bothered. Right. But the other thing was, and this was something we heard real quickly on feedback uh, soon after launching it, was at the end of the inspection, inspectors usually went through the whole house and they would walk the clients around and they would talk about everything and they would explain everything. But what happened is the client was watching this presentation and they were already informed about the report as you were reporting it. And so if they saw something that was really interesting and they get up and they walked over and they looked at it, um, they saw the issues, they saw the captions. We don't show them all the narratives, although we've had some requests to add that as an option. So that's something that we'll be adding in here with time. Um, but it created this discussion at the end of the inspection that was a informed client talking to the inspector that just finished their job. And so that cut the time that that final review took in half so the inspector could jump off to the next job. The other thing that happened that was real amazing was as soon as COVID hit, I'd like to take credit for this, but it wasn't my idea, is we had a bunch of intelligent inspectors that said, hey, I just sent this app to uh, my client investor in Japan to watch the inspection and it worked amazing. 
And now that COVID's here, they started marketing this as a remote inspection. So the client didn't need to come. The seller didn't worry about additional people in the house. They were emailing out a link to the app in advance, and they would text the client the code when they would start the inspection. And then the client would literally just, uh, just sit there and watch the inspection remotely. Uh, they see that slideshow going through the whole time. So right now we have a, a team inspection going. Um, you can see there's already been uh, two cool dudes there that uh, took a picture of themselves. Um, and then we have, uh, no one's added a caption yet. We have some nice pictures and, uh, you know, some ceiling fans and other stuff that are in there. Yep, some nice people houses. Hey, two cool dudes. Got a picture of Shannon and I. Um, so, you know, this is coming out from, you know, people uh, all over the country right now that are taking pictures. And as they're taking pictures, it's gonna, just going to continue to update um, as they're going along. And if they're selecting narratives, you see someone already selected master, bad, uh, master uh, uh, bedroom as a location there. It'll just keep keep updating uh, throughout the way. Um, so the way that this works is very simple. When you install when you install the app, you go to the app store, um, you search for Home Inspector Pro, it installs. By default, it'll put in um, currently it'll put in the name App Trial, and you can click log in, and there'll be a drop down list of all the templates that are loaded in the cloud. You download it just by clicking on download, and it's going to right now tell me it already exists. I can download it or not. Um, and then under the manage tab, I can select any template I've downloaded and I could do as many inspections as I want with that template. So the software, you can see I have that a hit master checklist report there. Uh, it comes with uh, fire door templates and fireplaces. Uh, if you're up in, uh, in Canada on the east, you're, you can do some French templates. There's mold templates. There's four points. We have two commercial templates. There's a Spanish template in there. There, of course, is the Trek 7.6. Uh, there's wind mitigations and roof certs and all sorts of other templates that you can download and load in. Uh, the new version we're about to release um, adds a new button there that says sign up for people that don't, and then it automatically downloads every template that we have in our test account. Right now, you would just click log in and then download the template you want, and then you're creating as many inspections as you want directly here uh, on the Manage tab. Once you create the inspection, you can go to the Inspect tab, just like we were talking about. On the client info tab, you can import from ISN or import from HIP Office. So if you're using either of those scheduling systems, you pulls all the client's data directly in there. It'll even pull the cover photo, um, or I can just tap the cover photo and take a new picture. Um, I can have the client sign uh, right here at the bottom, and that will drop into things like four point and wind mitigations and stuff like that. Um, and then as I'm going through the inspect tab, you know, I it, again as I was saying, I have. Uh, I can see right here on driveway and walkway now, I took two photographs. So I can quickly see, you know what? I don't have that section mark complete because I didn't comment on it or I didn't mark a rating. Um, so I need to jump in there and mark a rating on it and now it'll be marked completed. If you don't use the ratings, then simply opening up an item uh, will, will directly uh, mark it as complete. Um, I'll open it for a second for you guys uh, uh, to kind of comment here. Um, what are your favorite things within the mobile app? You know, Chris, Jerry, Shannon, um, when you guys are going through stuff? Well, I think one of my favorite things is the, the captions, the photo captions that you can pre, uh, preload. Yeah, uh, definitely. They, they're, they're awesome, you know, um, because there's a lot, of, a lot of photos we take. You know, I, I want a caption under every photo, and, and not every one has a narrative to it. Now, it's something I learned a few weeks ago on Facebook that you commented on, was that if I would choose the narrative and then take the photo, the narrative is available. Um, I didn't know that could do that. And that, that was really, once I learned that, that, that made a big sure. difference. So I'll show because, that here real quick. Yeah, so show that. That's really when you're, cool. When you're, there's two ways that you can caption photo, or two, well, three ways, actually. So if I've gone through my driveway walkway, I've commented on something, and I'll kind of comment on a few things here. That goes in the summary. And then I go over to the photos and uh, I'll click where it says tap to add caption. So by default, and you could turn this off if you don't, but by default, it actually pops up and shows you any of the items that you just selected to use as a caption. So I can say uneven slabs, I'm done, there's my caption. That was a comment I had just made on that report. The other thing that you can do is if you're looking at your comments and if at any comment, and most of the time, again, guys do this on the desktop because you have a nice big keyboard, it's a hell of a lot easier. Um, but if you just add the word caption in brackets, 
then I'm not going to select that comment. But if I go over to the photos, it'll automatically show. So that last comment there that um, wasn't one that I selected for that inspection, but because it was tagged as a caption photo, we call them comment captions, usually things like window cracked, screen missing. Um, you know, dry rot noted, things that are usually short, you throw under a caption, it's not the entire narrative. Um, and those show up there as a quick comment that you can use. And then if you want, you can easily come in and I can erase all of that. And then that becomes my caption. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can go in and of course, use voice to text recognition. The window on the west side of the house is cracked, period recommend replacement, period. So anytime you're using voice to text, that's obviously gonna make things easier. So it gives you three options, really. You can, you can write your own custom narrative. You can pre-populate for every individual item in your report. You can have specific you know, window photo captions, specific you know, driveway comments that you have, specific you know, um, water heater, uh, TPR valve captions that you use. And those will always show up in your template. So you, you never need to write those. They're just automatically a possibility for every photo that you take directly in that section. So yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Jerry. That's actually a very, very big time-saving uh, technique. Uh, Shannon, what about you? Yeah, same thing, captions. I have, um, so the way I do my caption or my report actually is, is really based on captions and then my narrative. So let's say cracked window my narrative will actually just say window was cracked, see period, see photos for location. My caption is set up so that it says window cracked dash. I select that caption, uh, voice to text, front left window or what front left or wherever the location is, save. And then now that that entire narrative is pretty much complete at that point. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting seeing how different inspector templates are uh, with HIP because it's so customizable, except for you guys in Texas. Um, you know, your, your templates, at least the structure of your templates are all identical, right? Um, but that becomes one of the things that is, is kind of critical is the features. Um, and in fact, I'll jump over here and kind of show some stuff off on the, on the physical report because, you know, that's really important too. Um, this report here has, uh, has colored comments. You can see the one and two that's in the front. Um, that will automatically color the reports when they're back on the desktop. So you can colorize your narratives. So like one might be always, it's a blue comment and two might be always a red comment. Um, we don't change it in this view just because it, it, when we tried that, the mobile ended up looking like a giant rainbow that someone threw up on and it was hard to read. So the numbers make it a little easier and then you can always just select the drop down. Uh, at the top when you're going through there. Um, but let me let me stop my share here real quick. Okay, I wanted to bring up and share. Well, actually, I have a I have a Texas report. This is a uh, probably one of your competitors um, who uh, is using our cover page feature. So. Um, you can you can design your own custom covers, which is another thing you can do to really like make your reports look amazing, right? So he's Grand Slam Home Inspections. He's got an awesome company name. Um, so he actually had one of our designers. We have a, a custom design feature. You can make your own cover page designs. We have uh, some that are included with the software, but we also have a, a design feature uh, for 300 bucks or $350. You can have someone custom design a cover for you. And so you can see the, the photo, the cover photo drops in behind the cover. So it's nice and cropped and clean. Uh, he took a picture of the front, all the information directly dropped on that report uh, directly from the, from the inspection. So he didn't have to customize this individual inspection. It's just set up once and then it's, it's always set up there. Uh, this was a, a seven five that was done a few months ago. The, the table of contents feature is another really cool one where you can literally just click on something and it drops directly in there. If you click on a photo, it clicks to expand. And so I'm looking at a PDF right now, right? I'm not even looking at, uh, at the video or, or at the web-based version of the report. Even in the PDF version of the report, it has click to expand directly in there. Uh, for those of you that aren't used to Texas, these checkbox ratings here are, are a requirement. They, don't, they unfortunately don't have a choice. They're, they're forced to, to do it that way. Um, 
I'm going to switch over here and show off. Let me see here. Let me switch my browser window real quick. I've had several clients comment on the glossary. They really like that. Oh, that's a really good point too. Let me see if he has any, any glossary terms here. Okay, you can still see this PDF, right? So he just had one <clears throat> term in his report, which is actually pretty rare. Usually there's a lot more in there. Uh, the glossary is a feature you can customize. So basically you are, um, you have a bunch of terms in your report. If I spell it right, that'll work better. Okay, so you have a bunch of terms in your report like GFCI and or TPR valves or double tap, all these things that your clients really don't know what the hell you're talking about. And in the past you had two options. One is you define what the term means in your report. And that means your report's longer. Right, literally could add pages to your report once you're explaining what all these technical terms mean. The other was you don't explain it at all, and the client is, you know, using uh, Google or worse, asking the real estate agent um, what what it means, or they're calling you and taking up time on the phone. So the pop-up glossary allows you to hover or the client to hover their mouse over a word, and it pops up the definition. So I literally popped over G GFCI. There's the definition of it, and some of our inspectors they've done some really awesome things like they. Um, have taken this to, again, things that we didn't originally think of. So um, Troy Pappas out of Virginia was one of the first guys I saw turning this into maintenance tips too. So you hover over air filter and it says, hey, we recommend you check it every you know three to six months to replace this at least annually. Um, and so that way it became not only the inspection report, but a kind of maintenance slash informative thing as well, where before you wouldn't have wanted to clutter your report with all these things because it would have made it a lot longer. Um, this is a hover so it doesn't make the report longer and the cool thing is is once you add a term to the glossary it automatically becomes interactive in any future report in any narrative that uses that term and so right now the default is it just highlights and you can change the color you can make it underlined wherever you want but it just does that to the first time the word appears in the report uh, you could do it to every time but that ends up highlighting two things most of the time um, but that way your report becomes way more informative without taking up uh, that additional uh, additional space within the report. So that's kind of like, again, one of those holy grails is we're always trying to figure out how to make, how do we make the report shorter, but give more information, right? Um, I'm gonna jump over here real quick and show a web-based version. So I'm looking here, uh, this report, you guys able to see this okay, by the way? That's right. Okay, so this is, um, uh, Mike Lagana out of Kauai. Um, this is the guy that, you know, you love to hate. So uh, he sent me a uh, inspection uh, yesterday. He was talking to me about that uh, is a, I think it was a $4,500 inspection that he was doing yesterday. Um, and I see some of you guys laughing because you, you've seen this guy. So the nice thing about Kauai is there's tons of these properties when you become the main inspector that it was a $12 million house. Um, but the other thing is he like calls me or messages me or calls me and says, hey, guess who I just did an inspection for? It was San Santana. Yes, the Santana. I've now inspected three houses for him. So anyways, um, so, you know, Mike has a very, very photocentric report. You can see he's in Kauai. He's got this blue um, and, and uh, you know, seagrass color uh, uh, cover design. Um, he's made his table of contents very colorful with all his different sections. Uh, his summary, HIP is one of the only software, if not the only software that has the page number. And if you want the item number for everything in the summary, and then if I click on anything, it's going to take me directly to that section of the report. So I click on something in the summary, it's here. I click on a picture, it enlarges, right? So all this stuff, and look, he's got all sorts of glossary terms. Uh, he's got like flashing. I click on that. Flashing is typically a thin layer of metal. So all these terms within the report that he has, um, that will, you know, make it, uh, make it easier to read as, as we're going through, make it easier for the client drip edge. You know, what's that? Uh, it's metal flashing applied to the edges. Um, but the other thing that we have, and I'm going to jump way down here to the end, cause I, I modified his report to add some, uh, some other features onto. Oh, actually it's not that inspection. Let's see. All right. Did it switch over here guys to the new tab? You see me scrolling right now? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So property photos, he has a tab at the end where he just puts all these CYA photos for his client because most of them are um, 
not in the uh, not on the islands. Uh, you can ignore the address on here. Like I said, I actually generated this. Um, but if I click on these 360 images, then I can actually pan around the entire property. And this is really cool for investors and out of town buyers. Um, and, and even for people that uh, you know have been to the property, it just allows them to go look through everything anytime they want, right? So here's this really cool oops, 360 image and I can look at the ceiling. I can look up at the floor, you know, I can look across the other rooms, see the entire kitchen. And this is just something that uh, there, he did with a, a, a GoPro Fusion camera. There's a bunch of 360 cameras. But the other thing is, is I can come in here and I can click on uh, video. And it's gonna pop up the video. Um, you probably won't hear the audio because I don't think I have that turned on, but you know, here's him looking in a, in a crawl space under a house. Um, and that includes directly in the report. The client can view that. And the cool thing is that works with the PDF and it works with the HTML version of the report. So either one of those, uh, you have that on there. Um, so I've gone through, uh, let's see, I've talked about videos, pop-up videos and pop-up photos, um, table of contents, a glossary feature. I've talked about uh, the cover page designs. I'll actually show a couple of those off here real quick. Let me do a, uh, a screen share. So again, getting into how you can customize things, you know, for yourself and for your company. Uh, let me do, I think I need a full screen share. Okay. Um, you guys see that cover page there? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. Low, uh, low system resources. I'm opening stuff here. Let me, I'm going to close that out. Okay. So stop share. Okay. I stopped the share because it was taxing my system too much there. Um, but there's, there's all those different cover page designs that you can create on your own or, or you can really customize uh, directly in there. The, the, like I said, there's, there's over a dozen templates in there. There's, um, two main different cover page designs. Each one of those has like eight to 10 different color schemes that you can choose from. You can, of course, customize them as much as you want as well. So there's a lot, a lot of different flexibility, um, that's directly in there. Um, so I wanted to go through, you know, first, you know, Shannon and Jerry, Chris, do you guys have anything to say before we kind of look at, uh, some of the questions that people have been asking? Just uh, Dominic, really quick um, on the desktop. I have to admit, I've been I was blown away looking at the desktop and working through it. And I know that I started playing there before I got on my tablet, but that's uh, where I created my first inspection with it and really kind of work working through it. So uh, that is really slick. Moving photos there, adding and adjusting them, <clears throat> even the edit function and stuff is fantastic. Yeah, it's especially when you get to the to the larger inspections. Um, it's a lot easier, you know, we have guys that doing a commercial job last week and he had 1500 photographs, you know, that he took and he was going back and it was a commercial job, right? So it was like, um, it was a, a strip mall. And so there's going to be a lot of photos. There's, there's a lot that's going on. And so he went back and reviewed it on site and batch imported all the photos because he ended up using a digital camera. Um, and batch import adds all the photos at once with like two clicks. You select the folder, they all appear, and then you go through and slot them. And you can easily add photo icons. So there's, you can add like a safety icon on each photo or a not accessible icon in each photo. And you could uh, import your own icon if you want to as well, but a lot of people will do that. Um, in fact, I think I have a, I have a report here I can show off that has some of those, uh, those safety icons. Um, I'll do that in a second. But uh, Shannon, Jerry, did you guys have anything to, to add there that I have, have not brought up yet? Um, no, I just wanted to, to comment. I've been kind of following along on the chat and on the, the Q&A a little bit. And there's a lot of questions and a lot of, of kind of fears, I think, sure. of how daunting and how many features and everything there is. And there are. And it's going to take a little bit to to learn a lot of these, uh, just take your time, enjoy it, have fun with it. Uh, I find new, I've been using it for what, five years now. I find new features and new things to do with things still. So, and 
like you said, Mike Lagana is great for that too. <laughs> yeah, the the important thing is, is that the all the extra features, you don't have to use those at the beginning, right? You don't want to do 360 photos, you want to do videos, you don't want to use a cover page designer. It's all set up from the get-go for you to literally just to click the mobile app like we saw, click a section, click an item, select it, put it in the report or not. All those other things, those are things you can get into when you're ready to get into them. Uh, it's definitely not a requirement for you to do in any way. And within the desktop or even with the mobile, they're all a click or two away. So they're they're purposely hidden to keep you from being inundated uh, when you initially start using it. So so that's definitely big. Um, you know, I, I was kind of looking through some of the questions here. You know, um, what's the the software is normally $7.99. And then either $29 or, or $50 a month, depending on what the service is. The cool thing is with a hit is all the inspect it guys got half off um, or free if they bought it in the last year off that initial purchase. Uh, you can also just pay nothing up front. And then there's a, a $75 or an $89 a month subscription that you can do. The difference with those and something we really didn't cover uh, is the hip office. So I don't want to take way too much time. So I'll just kind of explain it instead of demoing it. We have plenty of videos on our website, you can go click on hip office to see it. But basically you have two options. You know, we have hip cloud. Yes, there is a monthly fee. Inspected actually had a monthly fee as well. It was $35 a month. Um, I think that's right, Matt. But I know for a lot of people that was waived for quite a while because they knew that they were having issues that they were working through. Um, that that fee really goes to Amazon and it goes to, to programmers. So we come out with mobile updates um, constantly. Right, so we have our beta testing team literally gets a couple of updates a week where the public usually gets them about once a month, once every other month. Um, and what happens is every time that a file transfers from the desktop to mobile or back, every time we send out a web-based version of a report to your client, that website has to be hosted somewhere, right? Um, the servers, we have to pay Amazon to store all that. We have to pay them to transfer the data from one place to the other. Um, if, if we're, uh, storing those reports, we store them indefinitely. We have guys inspections that have been on, with our system for 18 years and we have every report they've ever created um, stored within there. Um, and then on top of that, all the data. So every time someone downloads it, we're actually paying Amazon and Google because we have backup systems directly on Google. And then we actually, it's called multi-zoning stuff. So we have servers that are located in different data centers from Amazon across the country. So like two weeks ago, uh, we actually picked up a huge bulk of users from a couple of our competitors because internet went down and knocked them out for, for you know, hours uh, and at one point for two days um, because an Amazon data center or someplace else went down. And that, I mean, listen, at the same time, that knocked out Netflix, it knocked out all sorts of places. Uh, and it could certainly affect us. And we were down, I think, for about five or 10 minutes with one of the, the server down as, uh, or data center issues they had. But the reality is we try to, to minimize that by hosting our servers in multiple locations. And so that you know, means we have to actually pay for two separate copies of everything, even though we could live with one, but we don't want you guys to have downtime. The other thing is, is all our, everything is segregated on different servers. So you know, one thing's controlling websites, another's controlling mobile, another's controlling data transfers. But then you have, so that's what the cloud fee basically covers. And then we have a dozen programmers. So we have 23 people on our team right now programmers, tech support, sales, uh, that's handling everything. People answering the phones, answering live chat, answering our ticket system. We have training classes four days a week, and we're about to expand that and add trainings on uh, uh, Saturday and Sunday as well. Um, but right now we're doing four trainings a week that you can jump on live sessions like this where we're going over different aspects of the software. Um, but that, that cloud fee covers all that data transfer. HIP office, and, and uh, there's report delivery as well. HIP office adds a whole other layer on there. And that really saves an inspector about an hour per inspection. And what happens is you enter in an order, it automatically sends the client uh, a link to pay, uh, a link to sign the contract. It automatically sends your clients text messages and emails that you've pre-populated. And we have default ones in there to, you know, 24 hours before the, to the agent saying, hey, make sure power... Uh, and water is on, you know, to the client three hours before it sends a text that says, hey, you know, see in three hours, looking forward to it. Uh, two days later, an email to the client saying, hey, can you leave me a review on, on Google? Here's the link. You know, all these different ways that it automates reports. Uh, big one that we had everyone, um, you know, we were watching everyone run was the mileage report, right? Because everyone's trying to get their, their tax 
you know, the mileage for their tax reports right now. So they're jumping in hip office and that's the most popular report that's being run right now. And the other one is the, uh, the full list of all invoices because they're giving all that to their accountants to sit there and, and work on their taxes. Uh, and I'm saying a lot of people, uh, it's only January 10th. So there's been a hell of a lot more than, than me who hasn't even started looking at my taxes yet. But you know, there, there's some people are actually uh, forward thinking. Um, the other big thing is there's a complete audit trail. And this has been big. So guys like Mike Casey, uh, he knows one of the, the founders in the industry with inspections. Um, you know, one of the big discussions we had is because they do a lot of work with claims and, and litigation work. And one of the things that they found is the biggest way to defend a home inspector is an audit trail. And so with HIP Office, as soon as you enter that order, which is on average three days before the inspection, it sends the client a copy of the contract. And it literally audits and says, system sent the client the contract at 452. Client opened the contract at 503. Client signed the contract at 510. And every single step, every single thing that occurs within that order process, the emails that go out, the text messages that go out, when the report was sent out, when the client opened the report, that's all in an audit trail. So if someone ever comes later and says, hey, I never got to see the contract. Well, you can pull it up and say, well, according to this, you saw it, you opened it, you signed it, you had 20 minutes that you went through it versus the alternative, which is if you talk to any of the insurance companies for home inspectors, what they don't want you doing is showing up on the job site. And the first time the client sees the contract is on the job site, because the reality is they can easily say, I didn't have time to sit there and read a five page contract. You know, he was already starting when I showed up. I, I showed up and the inspector was already on the roof looking at it before, because the inspector showed up there 15 minutes early. And so right now, over 90% of the inspections that go through our system are paid for before the client and you show up on the job site, which means you don't have to mess with checkbooks, credit cards, or, or anything else on the job site. You don't have to mess with contract. That's all uh, handled automatically you know, through HIP office. If you're using ISN, awesome. Our system integrates 100% with ISN. It's the same sort of thing, just a separate company. We even connected recently with Next Inspect. So one of the big things that we've always been a proponent for is we're here for you guys. And so a lot of our competitors go, no, we're not going to integrate with them because they compete with our products. Our thing has always been, we want you to want to use our products. If you're using something else, we'll connect with it. So you don't, you know, there's always that fear of having all your eggs in one basket or whatever. That's great. Or there's something you like, you can integrate with that. Our system integrates with, with HomeBinder, integrates with Recall Check, it integrates with Secure24, it integrates with uh, Porch Gold Assist. There's a million different things that we've already integrated with, and we have, we have even more that are on our to-do list that, that we're constantly working on. And the idea is for that data to flow to wherever you want without you having to manually go to Recall Check and typing in all the information so the client can get a list of recall appliances. Um, working on repair pricing right now so the clients can get repair pricing reports. One of the other really cool features with the, the HIP office and with the ISN is we both have a request repair list. So the client can um, basically with their agent review a list of all your summary items and then they go through through office, through <laughs> ISN and select with each item that you had that they want this fixed or they want a financial uh, you know, credit to the house or they don't care about it. And then it creates a new report that goes from the buyer's agent to the seller's agent that you facilitated that process. And that's something that uh, inspectors have had a, a, a huge um, uh, advantage for. And they, they, they love looking at those reports. Um, so looking at some of the questions here that we've gotten, uh, where do I go to purchase? Um, so for the majority, if you were already an inspected user, you're going to ahit.homeinspectorpro.com. Uh, that's on our, on our website. You can jump on live chat. If you're a, um, a graduate of AHIT, but you weren't using Inspect It, we have a separate link for you. We'll, we'll post that up in the notes um, so you guys can see that. Basically, there's different links on our page. None of you guys are going to our normal pricing page. We have special pages set up for all the AHIT inspectors during this time. Uh, so you guys have an easier time transitioning over. Um, do you, hey. let's see. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Hey, yeah, Dominic, before you get too much into that list, I, um, you asked a while ago if we had any comments. I just wanted to kind of address the people that are that are new, that are that are going to be setting up their templates, going to be changing over. Um, uh, and you touched on it a little bit about your team. And um, one of the things that impressed me so much when I, I started was the ability to communicate with your technical side on a bunch of different levels. 
you could call. And if they're not available, they call you right back. Right. If um, if you go to the website and you use the chat, that's you can you can enter your question, your name and at and, and you put your chat in there and you can go do something else <laughs> and they'll come back and your answer will be sitting for you, waiting for you when you get back. So um, I, I, that's what I was so impressed with that. So it was so easy to be able to get answers to all those questions. And then I found the Facebook page and we talked on that a little bit earlier, but then I found the Facebook page and that, that was great too, because like you said, people like Shannon and other people who've been out there for a long time or will answer your questions. I don't necessarily have to wait for you or one of your team members, but they'll give you a good, honest answer about what's going on. So those people that are kind of uh, afraid, you know, that it looks like it's kind of a big, um, uh, you know, it, it's kind of daunting and all that, that, they need to understand there's a lot of help out there, a ton of help. And that that's, and that's one of the things that really impressed me because I did the whole 30 days. I might even push the 30 days free trial before I decided to go ahead and spend the money. And my conversations with Dominic and, and with the team and all those people helping me to understand how this all worked was just awesome. And so that's one of the reasons that uh, I chose to, to do this. So that's what I wanted to say a while ago. And I'm going to get you get back to your thing there. Well, Dominic, if I can touch on that too. Um, my name is Matt Brown. I'm the national sales manager for AHEAD. I saw somebody in the chat asked who I was. Um, I was a large part of kind of the conversations we had uh, with other app providers. I think we had talks or conversations with about eight to 10 of them. Um, and it was very evident to AHEAD from the start that HIP had the best support of the marketplace bar none. Um, there are other providers out there that might only do like a chat feature or something like that. And you could never get anybody on the phone. Um, Dominic would reply to an email or a phone call that I had sent to him within probably 30 seconds. And Dominic still sends me emails at 3.30 in the morning and I don't know when he sleeps. Um, yeah. But that's the kind of support that you get from HIP. Um, it was a huge factor in why we decided to go with them. And HIP also has worked with Chris K that you see on the call, one of our hit instructors, um, multiple other instructors with us to make the transition from inspected to HIP as easy as it possibly could be. Um, so I think, I hope from this webinar tonight that you can kind of feel the passion Dominic has for his software, for the industry. Um, there's no other app provider out there that would even probably do a webinar like this for an hour and a half with our inspected users. Um, so I think the support uh, from Dominic and his team really goes a long way to why AHIT wanted to go with HIP as our partner. Dominic, were you, are you able to hear us now? Yeah, I can hear you now. My computer started blitzing out on me. Thanks, guys. And thank, thank you, Matt. That's uh, that is appreciated. And overall, and by and far, the uh, from what we've heard from guys moving across from a hit and inspected, the inspectors coming for, uh, across from a hit and from inspected have been great. Um, it's a little bit of a, it's a lot of guys all coming at once. And from the support side, it's it's a bit of it's like the ocean coming at you all at once. It's easy to get knocked down, but you guys have been very great during this transition and. That's the thing that for everybody to keep in mind is this was not a change that was planned on anybody's part uh, a year ago or uh, further back. And so in the same thing on our part, and we're doing everybody in support is doing their part to make it as easy for you guys. But change is hard. And you guys are in small businesses, you're setting your ways and a lot of you guys are changing. And this is just more change to throw on it. So uh, we're trying to be as patient and understanding. But support is what sells our uh, software and what keeps guys here is because the best software in the world is no good if there's nobody to answer your questions when something does go wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd say that support and just constantly trying to innovate are really the, the two big things that have helped us kind of lead the industry, you know, for all these years, there's, and there's a, you know, a half dozen new programs that come in the industry every year and they're gone like a year, you know, maybe two years later, because it is say a tiny, tiny niche industry, right? There's only about 30,000 inspectors in the U S and Canada. Um, then there's 20 other programs out there and there's some very good programs out there as well. You know, we're definitely not, uh, not the only inspection software out there. And we actually, you know, love the competition. It helps keep us innovate, right? Cause we have this you know, this constant competition, like how do we, how do we one up our competitors? You know, how do they one up us? And we go back and forth. And the, the person that wins at the end of the day is the inspector because they're the ones that's the, you know, get the byproduct, they get the software that, that, uh, you know, we're constantly pushing. And that's one of the reasons, like over the last 10 years, there's really only been like one or two other programs that have really entered the industry and stayed because as inspectors, it's, it's hard to switch. 
you're busy. Most of you guys work, you know, six days a week. Some of you seven days a week. You don't have time. And so switching software is, is a major, you know, life-changing event. The good thing is, is we've helped thousands and thousands of inspectors do this uh, over the years. And, and we're used to it and our team's used to it. And, you know, guys like Dan, who's, you know, been with us for like, you know, what, 13, 14, 15 years, um, you know, just have gotten used to the question that we hear every single time, right? So every single inspector calls us and says, my agents all really love my report. Uh, I, I just don't want to change. I, we probably heard that comment, you know, 5,000 times. And then what we always hear is later, the, the agents love the new format. We've never heard them come back and say they really want my old format back, right? It's never happened. Um, so, because the reality is you're, you're always taking it to the next level. You know, Chris is, is integrated in uh, rating icons into his reports. He's got this awesome background that he has, you know, to kind of give it the shading to match his company and everything else. And it, it's a completely new product than, than what you were creating before. And I think, you know, Chris, you probably initially started out trying to create something that was similar. And then, you know, you, you ended up like pretty far away. You know, it, it's always a fun uh, thing to do. You know, I, I've always been an IT guy, so it always came easy for me. But um, I got to say, in this whole um, experience, if you get out there and just play, have fun, play, try all the stuff. And like I tell my students in class, you're not going to break it. And if you do, I'll fix it. <laughs> but um, uh, play with all the functions. They're, they're, they're really amazing. But, uh, you know, there's been a few people that have been talking about, so how do I get started and how do we get going? I got to say the, uh, the the tutorials, the videos that are out there are huge, absolutely huge. You know, watch those a couple of times and get it down and figure out what some of the tips tips and tricks are, especially the first ones uh, to get switched over. Yeah, those are on the under the support menu on our website. Uh, there is a separate link for desktop and mobile tutorials. Uh, the office tutorials link I need to add there. But once you log into Hip Office, those are on the left hand side. Those are tutorials button. And then under that support menu is also uh, I see Dan commenting about it in chat right now. There's the the live uh, online classes. So the classes are all designed to be like one hour um, segments. Lately, Dan said they've been running about an hour and a half just because we've had so many uh, new inspectors from inspectors that have been switching over. There's a lot more questions than normal. Um, but uh, those are designed to be kind of a, a small group where you get the benefit of hearing what other people ask. You get to ask your own questions. Um, and, but they're all modulized. So like one's on how to create your own templates and edit them. Another one's how to use mobile, how to use desktop, how to use hip office, how to set up contracts. And they cycle every two weeks right now uh, through all the different uh, live classes we have. But then those, for the most part, are all in the recorded videos too. So you can look at the tutorials. You can watch a, uh, you know, one or two hour class on everything, or you can watch like a three minute clip on how to annotate photos you know, uh, a five minute clip on how to modify your contracts. You know, there's just really how much time do you have, you know, that day? And, and is it something specific you want? If Even if you go to the long video, that's, um, I think it's like two hours long. If you click on the video on our website, it'll open up in YouTube. And in the, in the description, it's actually time catalog. So you can see an index of everything in that two hour video and you can click and jump directly to any specific uh, topic that you want within that. And then you can, can keep watching. And we're actually redoing a ton of those videos right now because with our HIP6 release uh, earlier this year, we or earlier last year, I guess we're in 2022 now, uh, mm -hmm. we, we just have a, a ton of, of new features that were, were added into the software. So, uh, Dan, do we have any questions on there that we want to uh, address directly on here? Not really. You guys have, uh, seems you guys have addressed most of them. So, Okay, definitely awesome. I saw someone asking what hip office is. That's what I was uh, talking about a, a few minutes ago about the, the yeah, scheduling yeah, system. The, the office system also allows you to insert code into your website so clients can schedule inspections or more importantly, agents can schedule inspections usually at like 11 o'clock at night when they finally get an offer accepted um, without talking to you at all. So literally you set up your schedule you say uh, you, most inspectors have two time blocks a day. Some have three starting times. They put those in. Clients can then block those times. The system calculates how long the inspection will take based on criteria you've put in, right? How old the house is, how big the house is, how far it is. Um, and then automatically calculates the price based on all the stuff you put in. And then 
starts off the entire process. So you can either have it automatically save it as a draft order that you have to review and approve, or you can set it up to say it's automatically approved and send them the payment link and the contract immediately. Um, and there's also a place in between where you can say like, you can automatically approve anything up to 4,000 feet, but anything over 4,000 square feet, hold as a draft, shoot me an email to tell me to look at it right away. Uh, and then I can make any adjustments, you know, double check on Zillow that it really is really a 3,000 square foot house and not a 5,000 square foot house and, and all that other good stuff that you guys come across all the time. So somebody um, did ask us uh, what uh, all the different price breakdowns would be for the monthly cost of the software. So the, the traditional is if you're paying nothing up front, you have 89 a month, that's it. And that's with hip office and everything or 74 a month if you didn't have hip office, right? That's nothing up front. The other way is you pay $7.99 and then $50 a month or $29 a month. And we call that our foundation plan. The, the foundation plan is cheaper in the long run, right? You pay more up front, but it, after you're continuing to use it, you're only paying $29 or $50 a month. That's less than $75 and $89, so you're saving money. The reality is, though, as an inspected user, if you're an inspected user switching over or even an AHET user, you're getting such a massive discount, either off half off or free off the foundation plan. It makes way more sense to go that way. Or you can do the, um, it's half off a one-year subscription. So you, you pay for the entire year uh, and you get half off of that. And then it goes back to the monthly fee, the normal monthly fee after that year is up. So either way, um, if you go to, to ahit.homeinspectorpro.com, it lists all those prices. You put in a code that AHIT has sent you. Um, if you purchase inspect it and for some reason you didn't get that code, they had a lot of people that, you know, you've changed email addresses over the years or you, you, it ended up in your spam folder. Um, just shoot our help uh, at Home Inspector Pro or jump on live chat. We can look you up. Um, there's a few cases that we haven't been able to find you. We just reach out to AHIT and they'll generate a coupon code uh, that we can load or send to you that you can load directly in the system. Um, and if you're an AHIT grad, uh, AHIT has those codes uh, or they've sent them out already to you that you can load directly in the system as well. Uh, Dominic, just a quick note. Um, with all the inspector users out here, if anybody would like to see what the inspected version looks like when it's completed, uh, including the new summary page that has the uh, uh, major items and, and so on, like we used to have in the old software, um, feel free just to get in touch with me. I'll shoot sure. you out a, a report. My guys are using it every day, so. Yeah, and that's uh, Chris Gajildson. Am I pronouncing that right, by the way? No, not at all, but you'll never, you probably never will. So, hey, just it's like my name. No one says Marisich right, anyways. That's that's why my wife you is. Know, just leave out the J and the D and turn the E to an O. You got it. <laughs> K E L S O N. Peace, cake. Wow, I was way off. All right. Um, so, you know, Chris has been a, a hit instructor for a long time. He's on, if you go to our Facebook group, like I said, one of the best things you can do is go to the Facebook group. Uh, just realize people usually go there either because they have an issue they're trying to solve. Um, or, you know, they have a suggestion. That's a place that we really look at for like helping shape where the software goes. Like we keep track of things that come up that we don't have yet, but a lot of people come on there saying, Hey, how do how the hell do I figure this out? Because, you know, they don't want to jump on chat or they don't think that we're actually around at seven, eight or nine o'clock at night. Like we are. So we often get this on Facebook. I know support's closed. Can someone else help me? And then the response will be support's calling you right now because we're, we're actually still around. Um, we have an ongoing joke with a lot of our East Coast inspectors where, you know, they're crazy and getting up at like 4 or 5 a.m. And then I'm crazy answering tickets at like 1 or 2 a.m. Because um, I'm looking at, you know, anything that comes up late before I go to bed. And we're, you know, chatting with each other about how insane sometimes uh, our, our, our hours are as, as business owners, right? You know, just like you guys, we're a small business. You know, the reality is just like everyone else in this industry because it's such a small industry. So. Um, Matt, I really, you know, uh, Chris, uh, Jerry, Steve, uh, Shannon, I really appreciate all you guys being on here. Um, I see quite a few other questions coming on. If you guys email help at homeinspectorpro.com, um, we're more than happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, Steve Thrash is saying, can HIP office replace ISN? That's, you know, it's another alternative. ISN is an awesome program as well, but yes, that's, Basically, it's doing all those same features. Um, but, uh, or jump on Facebook. If you go to Facebook and type in Home Inspector Pro, uh, you'll find one of our groups and the other off, uh, group is the HIP Office Discussion Group. 
those are the two main groups that uh, we have. We have other groups for beta testers and stuff, but um, those aren't the groups that need to be in. Um, but on our website, um, we have tickets on there. Just so you guys know, we have had a massive, massive number of inspected users um, switching to our software in the last um, 30 days. On top of that, we also had our holiday sale over December. So we had a massive number of non-inspective users that were switching over. So um, our, our backlog you know, of calls and tickets is normally we're back on tickets and stuff like within you know, 10, 15 minutes and calls are immediately answered or a couple minutes. We're a little bit slower right now during parts of the day just because we've been so inundated. Um, but uh, we're catching up quickly. We're also um, training a couple more staff members right now, which takes a few weeks. But um, take advantage, you know, message us. We'll, we'll keep up with you guys and, uh, and answer all your questions. So thank you guys. We will be uh, stopping the recording here and then we will be posting this uh, once we're done uh, for everyone to watch. So thank you guys very much. And I think Dan, you probably became the, uh, the host when I dropped off. So you can stop the recording there. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, nope. You're, you're still the host. Really?